You know, I think we can do better. Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic. So yes, this is a kid's uh, noisy hammer. Now, I thought that these things used like little squeakers inside the little uh, flexible parts at the ends here, but that's not how this works at all. These holes are two whistles, which is how you get the sound out of them and also why it doesn't make any sound really when I just kind of squeeze by hand. This thing is also absolutely massive in comparison to an ant weight. Like the, uh, the head of the hammer is bigger or wider than an ant weight normally is and the whole thing is just insanely large. It's also 60 grams, which is a lot for a weapon in an ant weight. But thankfully we don't really need any of the back section and the balance point seems to be kind of just around here somewhere. So we're gonna cut this down a little bit and we should be left with around about 30 grams of hammer, which I think I can make work in a combat robot. And there we go, it is now chopped down and uh, it still works seemingly. Although I will say if you hold it in just the wrong spot, you actually don't get anything out of it. So yeah, covering these holes here really does seem to nullify the effect of the whistle. So we need to make sure those are fine. And I think that means that we really just need to attach from the sides here and not from here, which just kind of makes sense because we can then swing this way. Uh, again, I need to not... Oh, this is gonna be ridiculous. Uh, also, yes, I was very, very grateful too that the plastic molding in this thing did actually have a back on the whistle chamber because that is kind of the chamber in here. And I was hoping that that was the case because if it was using the entire handle as a whistle chamber, we would have needed to add something into the back here to keep the whistle from uh, not working anymore. And that would have changed the pitch and the tone and everything on these whistles. But thankfully, we're all good on this front. And I think I probably need to modify these round sections here. This, All of this could come off. I was just a bit lazy when I was doing this. But getting rid of it so that we can actually mount up to the sides on a nice flat piece of plastic is probably the best bet. Okay, now that we have the hammer itself liberated and it still squeaks. Oh, that's too loud. Uh, I've also printed an ABS handle uh, which can attach to an N20 motor. And just for now, I have taped this in place. It's not perfect, but I kind of want to test this just taped down because I have a feeling that the N20 might round out this particular print. Uh, given how much mass it's swinging around and how fast it needs to go to get the sound to happen. So yeah, that's where we're at with that. Now I could have, I could have just taken one of the old chassis, well not this one because it's the brushless one, but it's just the one I found uh, the fastest. I could have taken one of the old chassis and just mounted this hammer in here, but I figured, I mean, look at this. It's so bright and colorful and it just needed its own chassis. So I printed one. Bam, look at this thing. This is a silk PLA and I don't normally do PLA, but this is just too nice to look at to not do it. And I put the horns on here from uh, one of my other designs. And yeah, this is gonna go really, really nicely. I also just really like the look of the horns to have the, the hammer smack down in between them. I think that's gonna look really, really cool. So let's get the electronics together and build this thing.
<laughs> so that was great. And we got a little bit of a squeak going even with the hammer, just kind of like duct taped into this Y fork arm that I have here. So for the actual competition, I am going to change this up and have it hot glued in so it just holds a little bit more, but I can't affix it too permanently because already the D shaft on the bottom of this Y section is rounding out. I would love to be able to swing this thing a little bit further, like have a slightly longer arm and get a bit more speed going on it, but the D shaft is already rounding out. So that amount of pressure is not going to uh, be good for that basically. So to do that, we'd need to go to a slower motor that I have that have hex shafts on them instead of the D shaft. That probably would work, but I'm not gonna do that for this particular event. I'm gonna fight this thing first, see how hilarious or whatever it is in combat. And then at that point, we will decide if we make a version two. If we make a version two, I'll probably try to have the hammer touch the ground at the back here. I thought I had that set up, but I've just got some of my geometry a tiny little bit wrong and that's fixable, but not right now. And then, yeah, we'll try and get the whole thing swinging a little bit faster so we get a nice louder sound out of it. We're getting a little bit of sound right now, but it's not as loud as I could have done with my hands. Um, and I probably can't do it on camera here either. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we definitely want some sound out of this and we are getting some, especially once I charge the battery. The battery that's in here was a little bit underpowered. It's about seven and a half volts right now, which is a whole volt under what it could be, which means that this hammer can swing faster than this. So we are gonna get louder sounds out of it. And I'm assuming when we've got another robot in the way, we're gonna get more compression on our hammerheads too, which will mean that we'll get more sound, hopefully. Anyway, that is gonna be it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed this very, very silly robot build. If you wanna see this thing fight, make sure you subscribe because there will be a fight report coming out in a few weeks time. Anyway, that is it for this video and I will see you in the next one.